So there have been a lot of violence in uh, Donald Trump events uh, recently, but in one rally it got super violent. We even have an arrest. Wait till you see the guy who did the punching and what he has to say. That comes at the end and it is atrocious. But first I want to give you full context. Uh, Rod Weber was there. He goes to many of these uh, rallies and he uh, wrote about it on Daily Coast. He said, at this particular rally, within 18 minutes that I was there, it looked to be about one ejection per minute and a lot of hateful shouting in the process. He explains that they uh, removed a pregnant woman and a blind woman. It, actually, on that one, we've got tape. Watch this. Blind. Yeah. The way you guide someone, if you're being a sighted guide, is you put your hand down and I'd grab your elbow like this, but she wouldn't let me do that. Like she had me by the hand and was sort of pulling me. Okay, yeah, that's very classy. Uh, but we're just getting warmed up here. Uh, wait till you see the guy getting punched. Uh, but one more uh, other example for you, it actually comes from Rod. He wore a t shirt that said, Love is the answer. So obviously he had to be removed from a rally that focuses on making America hate again. Uh, so here's a picture of him getting removed. Uh, and then as he's getting removed, Donald Trump says, do you see what he's got written on his very dirty undershirt? You see, it says love is the answer. And in a certain way he's right. Love, love's a great thing. Love's the answer. He's got written there. I wonder who he makes love with there. Oh, forget it. Because for Donald Trump, it's always about sex. This is the guy who in 2004 said, Nancy Reagan, here's what I think of her. She's not very beautiful. What does that have to do with anything, right? He sees a guy that says love is the answer in the middle of a hate rally, and he goes, Yeah, I wonder who that guy gets laid by. <laughs> this guy's running for president. I mean, I get it if he's a reality show star, which he was, but now he's running for president and winning on the Republican side. Unbelievable. So now, in an earlier uh, Vegas rally or Nevada rally, when one protester was uh, protesting, Trump had said, quote, I'd like to punch him in the face. Well, his fans have now taken him up on it, so uh, that brings us uh, to the videos from North Carolina. So we've got um, a black protester here, and he's going to be, as being, as he's being escorted out, he's going to give the middle finger to the crowd, and then watch what one of the people attending the rally does. All the lie. Lie to put the Bible down, then lie. Now, in the beginning there, it looked like he just pushed him a little bit. No, 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 he punched him. Take another look at it from a different angle. The cop's reaction is amazing. So the guy gets punched. We can't tell why he went to the ground. If it was because of the punch or the cops threw him on the ground. The guy doing the punching doesn't get arrested. The guy that got punched uh, is, again, manhandled and thrown out of there. So now let's go to a reaction here on this story. A North Carolina County Sheriff's Office said Thursday that it is investigating why its officers arrested a protester who was struck in the face at a Donald Trump rally, but not the man who struck him. One of several incidents that highlighted the challenges to law enforcement in maintaining order at Mr. Trump's events. So yeah, that is a bit of a challenge. At least they're investigating and there's going to be some good news at the end here on that. Uh, uh, Rakeem Jones was that protester and here's what he says. He said, the police jumped on me like I was the one swinging. My eye still hurts. It's just shocking. It's like the dude really hit me and they let him get away with it. I was basically in police custody and got hit. Um, 
Okay, well, it looks like the cops might be a little bit apologetic about this one. Not exactly. Here's the sergeant uh, at the scene. Sergeant Sean Swain said, We should have done exactly what we did. We didn't hurt anybody. We did what the Secret Service asked us to do and separate everybody. If you don't separate and extinguish the problem right there as it occurs, it gets worse. It can escalate so fast it's hard to control. Now, look, it's true that they should separate them. I totally understand that. It's true they've got to maintain order. There's a lot of people there. I understand all that. But at a bare minimum, you should also escort the guy who threw the punch out of the building and into your squad car because that is very, very clearly assault. But until you get caught on tape, the natural reaction is, ah, I don't know, that's okay. Who else wants to hit him? Okay, and then this guy, you got to go. So, look, you might be saying I'm being unfair to the cops, but you saw the tape. If I, see, that's the thing. If we didn't have the tape, they'd just say, oh, yeah, he, it wasn't him. It was the other guy. Yeah, he did it. That's, we, we had it right. Now we've got the tape, so it's a little embarrassing, so they got to backpedal a little bit. But one more quote from Sergeant Swain, because I found it instructive. He said, we've been the bad guys since Ferguson. We're fighting an uphill batter, battle for the public's perception. Yeah, but why do you think you're fighting that battle? Because you arrest the guys getting hit, not the ones doing the hitting. See, that's why the public doesn't trust you. It makes some sense. They're so annoyed that you finally see the things that they're up to. Um, now, the good news is, finally, this guy was arrested. John McGraw, 78, of Linden, North Carolina, has been charged with assault and battery and disorderly conduct, the news station said on its website. The incident on Wednesday night in Fayetteville was caught on video by bystanders. But we're not done yet. You want to see what else John McGraw said on tape after he punched the guy? Watch this. Did you like the event? You bet I liked it. Yeah? What'd you like about it? Knocking the hell out of that big mouth. <laughs> we don't know who he is, but we know he's not acting like an American. So you deserved it? Every bit of it. What was that? Yes, he deserved it. The next time we see him, we might have to kill him. We Look, man, uh, Trump keeps saying these rallies are fun. That's not fun. That's super dangerous. I, I want to end on another veteran, uh, this veteran who at another rally had participated in shouting at a young black woman. His name is Al Bamberger, and he was in Korea, and he got caught up in this atmosphere and wound up shouting down and pushing a young uh, black woman. Uh, woman who was a protester at a, at a different rally. And he said as to why he did it, now he says he's totally embarrassed. And he says, quote, Trump kept saying, get them out, get them out. And people in the crowd began pushing and shoving the protesters. Unfortunately, a lot of this behavior was happening right, right next to me where I was. And he says he just got wrapped up in that moment and wound up pushing the woman too. And now he says he's mortified by it. And he found out that the guys who were pushing her Next to him were white nationalists. He's like, I'm not with those guys. What have I done? And he says, quote, I have embarrassed myself, my family, and veterans. This was a very unfortunate incident, and it is my sincere hope that I can be forgiven for my actions. See, I give you that quote because this is what happens in a mob. This is what they call a mob mentality. All of a sudden, Trump is saying, get him out, get him out. And you're riled up, and people are pushing back and forth. And next thing you know, this guy who, under different circumstances, wouldn't have done any of that, is assaulting someone in a way that's, according to him at least, out of his character. That's what happens when fascism starts to rise. So as you see people talking about killing people, proud that they're assaulting him and hitting him, and we're on a different plane here. This is bad, bad news. I want to give credit to Rod Weber and all the people who have been covering this and, uh, and all the people who have pressed charges because if we don't bring uh, law and order and the rule of law back in charge here, this thing can get out of hand and real quick.